Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. This will be an interesting one today. This is how to upgrade a Pen 140 Squitter to a Cortez conversion. And this one was uh, sent in by Howard. And we're going to do our best to, uh, to make those changes, show you how to do that if there's something that you would like. I'm going to talk a little bit about hot routing the reels, which is what we'll be doing here. And uh, give you a look at how you can take an old reel from the 1970s and really give it a second chance to shine. Well, if you like these kinds of videos, I want to encourage you to subscribe to my channel. If you do subscribe to my channel, please use that notification button. That button will let you know when I'm posting videos. And, well, it's an opportunity for you to see if that's something that you would like to learn more about. And uh, maybe learn how to service it if you have one. And, uh, well how to keep them fishing for a long time to come. We're going to start by removing the side plate. Basically what we're keeping here is the side plates, uh, the spool, the gearing inside, and uh, well not much more. Everything else gets transferred over to the new case. So all of the material pieces in here will go over, the spool will go over, and the rest of it essentially is uh, well, I think we need the side bars. We're going to find that out. Okay, let's uh, take a look at what's included in this. Now, he sent me a couple of mixed bags here. So there's some screws and the like that are in my uh, uh, container here that may or may not apply. But what we have, essentially, it looks like the conversion kit here. I think that's all the screws and the like that I will need for this conversion. We have the arm. And uh, we have the real seat, the star adjuster, the new uh, bridge sleeve. So we don't have the posts. So we're going to have to uh, do the posts. Okay, let's uh, let's start with the first part of this one, which is installing the um, click and the uh, click tongue and the click ratchet. So I'm going to. Take the pieces out of the bag here, put those into a parts tray so I don't lose them. Again, we've done a couple of conversions before. I don't know why we have an extra set of some things here, but we do. And uh, well, we'll just put these in here for safekeeping for now and uh, make sure that we can do that. All right, underneath here is a bearing. That bearing is included in here. I can just snap that bearing in, make sure that we oil that. Next up then is this click tongue assembly. And we have the click ring. And we have two small screws to hold it in. And that those two small screws are Torx screws. So I have to go to my micro driver collection here for the Torx screws. I'm trying to find these two little hold fasts. And those are going to lock that ring in place. Now on the original, the original only has a single um, centering screw holding it to the side plate. And it has two little plastic studs. Cortez has kind of reversed that here. They've taken where the two studs should go. And tapped in some screw holes. I think that's probably a better balance overall for the ring. So there we go. We've installed the ring. Now we have the assembly for the click ratchet. So the tongue is held in place with an E-clip. So bring that out. Up and over. We have our button in the back side of this that will come through our side plate. The click tongue comes over the top. You want to rest that into that case just to make it easy on yourself. And then we have the e-clip. And you may need, depending on your finger strength or the like, you may need a little assist from a pliers. So that's what I'm going to do here. I'm just going to set the two forks of that E-clip around the case and just pull it in with the pliers. And now we have a functioning click knob that comes in and out. Very nice looking. All right, 
That is the non-gear side of the equation. Next, let's deal with transferring some of these frame pieces then, since we have this now. What we want to do next is to remove the screws that are holding the side plate on. And there's going to be two long, or four long ones and two short ones on this side. There's going to be tapered screws on the other side. Most of the time when I get projects in like this, it comes with instructions. Uh, I don't know if Howard got them in the pack or not, but I do know that there aren't any instructions included here. That's pretty certain. So we'll deal with that. Okay, two more. And these... Uh, these side plates should be held on to. They're hard to get. And uh, well, if you try to buy the pieces and parts to make it up, they're not that cheap. All right, so he gets all of these back. I'll just take one of these bags that, that that came in. Go ahead and do that. The screws are replaced with um, Cortez screws, so these can come into that package as well. We're going to remove the bridge here. Those are the two recessed screws. They're tapered and they're smaller. Actually, I believe that they're the same screws for the Jigmaster as well. You have two shorter ones that go into the bridge base, and then you have four slightly longer ones that are holding these posts on. And the posts are really what we're interested in here. Do that. I think I read somewhere along the line that the solid bars from the Jigmaster may or may not work on this. I do know that there was a Newell conversion for these at some point, but we're not working with Newell conversions, we're working with a uh, Cortez conversion. So I'm not sure if that's offered. Alright, one more of these. So I need the bars, I don't need the rain. Don't need the real seat. Don't need the screws, so they'll all go back to Howard. All right. Those are set off to the side now. So what we can do here is we can install a base. And this is interesting, we have a solid frame, it's only going to use two of those crossbars. And these look like they're all the same size. So just That's the bearing coming loose. I think I have to step up now on the... why they do this. They continually change the sizes of the screws. All right, there we go. All right, one goes on. The other goes on. And we can put the other two long ones in now. So there's four side plate crossbars here. I think we'll pick the best two. Some of these have a little bit of chrome or tarnish on them. This one looks good. This one looks good. These are the lesser ones. Put those in the bag. Okay, two more of these then. And when I do these, I like to start the, the bar itself. Well, if you have any questions on this reel or any reel, maybe you're working on one, want to know a little bit more about it, uh, maybe you're just curious about Cortez and uh, the products they make, the, I would reference you to go to the website for that. 
Uh, this is a very attractive reel. I think once we get done with this one, somebody's going to ask, ask him, what in the world is that reel? Because you won't find it on shelves, and it certainly will bear very little resemblance to the uh, squitter by the time we're done. All right, now we got the bearing back in there. Take a moment to just polish off this spool. This is an anodized aluminum spool. We can put a little bit of grease onto the spool stud, and we'll just set that aside now. It's going to be a very attractive package when it's done. All right, now we need to transfer over the uh, the inners. So we have a star adjuster that's going to be replaced. The bridge spacer we're going to need. And I think what I'm seeing here this is going to be interesting. I'm not sure if we have the override in this. We don't have the override. So we're going to miss this toggle here for the back pedaling of the reel. That's not in the cards here. You're also going to miss the one screw take part, which uh, is what this is famous for. You can just pull a screw, remove it from the side plate pretty easily. That'll be gone as well. But with that gone, you get a stronger side plate. Because you're not depending on just one link holding it down with a couple of studs. All right, we're going to pull this off and out. We have our pinion gear. We have our drag stack. And I think that's probably all we're going to use from this. Nope, we've got to use the bridge. Like I said, normally you would think they would come with some instructions. In this case, not so much. All right, we want to remove the gear sleeve. To do that, you're going to push the pin out with an awl. This is the pin that we just pushed out. Now we can pull up and out on the gear sleeve. And I'm not sure, I don't see a washer for that gear sleeve, so I suspect we're going to use reuse this one. And this is a good place to tell you, take pictures. Uh, we're kind of doing this haphazardly because we more or less know the reel. But if you don't know the reel, don't risk getting stuck. Taking something apart and then not being able to quite figure out where the piece goes upon reassembly. I just got a reel in. It's a Shimano reel. The person took it apart. Some cleaning in that, and well, on the way back in, it didn't assemble right. Picture pictures help on situations like that. Okay, we can take the fishing of grease now, put a little bit of grease onto the gear shaft. Let's go grab that piece. We have the pin is safely kind of lodged in here. Bring that in, insert the new pin, this is a stainless sleeve. So when, it's, when you're looking at upgrades, you're not just looking at doing something like a, more, a solid frame here, you're all looking at an upgrade in materials as well. And these are stainless. Now you can bring the gear sleeve washer back on. These look like new drives, they are. So you want to just check your main gear now, because this transfer is over. If you have any questions, bring it over. Find a hard brush, pull through it, and make sure it's clean. I think we've got a nice starting reel here. And now you have a six drag system here. One of the washers is already in there. I'm going to put some grease onto the main gear. These are Penn's HT100 washers. They are optional to grease. 
All right, set your main gear on. The first drag washer's in there. We have two washers that have rectangular centers in them. They go high and low in the three washer orientation, so put one of those on. I'm going to just use a little bit of fishing wheel grease on here. The idea to grease is to keep the fabric flexible, and when you get into carbon tax hybrid washers like the HT100, uh, most of them are not porous, so they can't absorb the grease, so you're just kind of wasting it, which is why I say it's optional. All right, the one with the ears goes in the center, last one goes on top, second of those keyed washers, the cap washer, the cap. So that bridge is now done. It kind of be interesting to see here. Okay, so they do have the anti-reverse dog is going to sit on this post as the spring. So we need to, to find the, the dog that doesn't have the spring in the center. We're going to have to transfer the spring from the old dog to the new one. That's going to sit in the hole like that. I don't know if you can see that or not. Put that back now. Next we need to add the eccentric. There is a piece of release lever. And there's two little rubber washers. And a metal washer. One more still in there. So the rubber washers, they're going to go into two slots here on the arm. It's hard getting that first one over the, the initial bump or inset. All right, here's your second one. And this kind of goes on like a rubber band. Just kind of stretch, holding the one side tight and stretching it. That will be the washer that goes under the screw, I guess. I'm going to remove the eccentric now. It's a good place to see how it's all set up underneath. We have our yoke. We have the two screws, or springs rather. I don't know why I keep wanting to call them screws. But I do. We have our jack. And well, this one's got this little bridge screw here that should come out. And those are going into a quartz tray. I know, as I said, I've been a little bit reckless here. I'll just put them all in the quartz tray to keep that out of the way, clean up that yoke. Okay, this is the eccentric. This needs to be pushed out. And then we have the eccentric guard here. The eccentric itself is going to anchor itself into the side plate. I'm going to take the eccentric spring, place that in the hole. We want to find the tag end of that, place that in the notch on this side of the case, and bring the eccentric in, just like that. In order to get this to line up, we need to find the balance point on that. I'm going to use a micro driver to do that. Sometimes you can do it by hand. But find it where it balances, like that. And you can come over the other side and take your release arm, 
this case there's a, a washer here but I think we're going to use the original washer that's the lockdown nut here for the screw and then we can tighten that screw down All right, now we have an eccentric. You can see how those two little rubber bands keep it from marring the case. And this is how your eccentric works. It raises and lowers the yoke. To continue that, we can take the yoke springs, bring these in, get the bearing for the side case. This is the second bearing here. That seats in the back end of the case. Once you clean your yoke, put some grease on that. And get both sides because there's a, a groove for your pinion gear. Check your pinion gear. I checked this one earlier. It's in good condition, so just grease this one up. We can install that by installing that over the two springs in that side case. And you push down on that, you take your jack, hook that around the top, and make sure that that stud there is in that little groove in the jack. That's the jack assembly. Next up then, so this usually falls off, so I might as well just not we'll lose it there, but when it falls off, you'll know. I'm going to take our anti-reverse with that spring. A fully threaded bridge screw through the bottom here. And then what we want to do now is bring your bridge assembly into the cavity and then rotate it at about 180 degrees. Now we have our anti-reverse dog and spring. First part is that the dog itself goes over the uh, screw, the hole in the dog, and now that you can press that spring against the side shoulder. Now on the original one, you know, it might, might be hard to see, but that's rusting right in there. On the original one, we had a toggle switch right here that would move that dog in and out. On this one, this is a locked in, always on, anti-reverse. You do not have the back pedal fish fighting feature to this one. Tighten that down just a couple of turns. Make sure that it's seated and it's holding that dog in place. And then we have three more bridge screws. Two of them have a partial thread on them. This would be a partially threaded one. Those are going through the springs that we put into the cavity. So make sure you put those up top. And again, just get them started so that you can feel that they're, they're grabbing. I'm going to put the second threaded one in below that. Do a visual check if you don't think you're feeling that thing lock in. And again, these are all just lightly threaded right now. Now I can tighten them all up. We're oh, making headway. Once you get down, you can test it. Make sure that you're hearing it. Let's go to the package. It's the last of the major components that's left here. We got a new star adjuster. I think I'm going to wait to put that on because that may interfere with putting the, the screws in for this. Light coating of grease onto the other side of the spool shaft. Also, light coating of grease onto the, the jack here. That's the one thing we weren't able to get greased when we were putting that on. Bring this up and over. And now we can align and set those four screws that are still in the box into the frame.
And again, I start with a light set on these and then I go back and ensure that the screws are tightened down. And I want to make sure that they go in stress-free. Okay. Oh, well, as I say, okay, we're not in on that one. Last thing you want to do is force any of these things in. Just take your time. It's not going on square. If you're struggling with the screw, back it off. Try again. Okay, tight. One more to tighten up. We're coming down to the end of it now. Now we can put our star adjuster on. Now, if we didn't change out that bridge shaft, you could put a drop of oil in the center here. But since it's all changed out, that's not necessary. Let's go for our leveraged handle. I'm not a fan of leveraged handles, but I understand why they are used. Cap back. And before you tighten this nut, make sure that you have your star adjuster tightened down. Otherwise, you're going to trap that and you won't have the uh, the drag functioning properly. All right, well, there's one more screw that needs to come on here. It didn't come in this box. It was missing originally. And I'll need to go into a parts tray to find the screw for that. But in the interim, I'm going to do the test without the, uh, the last box screw. What a beautiful piece. Somebody tell me that this is a Pen 140. You'd, you wouldn't believe it. You're used to seeing the old maroon pieces and the uh, bars and the like. This one is just a beautiful conversion of them. I think the glove off, which has got a lot of grease on it, do a wipe down here just to make sure that everything is shiny and sparkly. Let's give it a try then. So we're in free spool. That's how we mounted this. We're way too tight on the bearing, so back that off. You should have a little bit of knock, that's just a little bit too much. But when you adjust, it should just be the slightest of side to side play. That's about right. Yep. Alright, in the free spool, this thing will cast a mile, right? That's what the, they're all known for. We might want to adjust that just a little bit more. Yep, we got it now. Okay, put it in the gear. What can I say? What a beautiful reel, what a beautiful conversion, and uh, what a journey to uh, show you how to do that. I hope you've enjoyed it. I haven't done one of them on the 140s before. I like the output of it. And, uh, well, if you, again, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section. And uh, if you want to see more of these types of videos, just let me know. I'll try to accommodate them as best we can. Before I leave, I want to thank our police, fire, safety, rescue, and all of the folks that are our first responders and working in public safety and support. I appreciate everything it is that you do. I want to take a moment to thank you, the channel viewers, for everything that you do to help make this channel what it is. I do appreciate your, your watching, your loyalty, and your uh, contributions to the channel in terms of the content, the questions, and the forum, and the... Uh, information sharing, which is what this is all about. I hope you've enjoyed it. That Cortez conversion on a 140 is a fun little reel. And uh, well, we've all learned from it. This is Dennis with Second Chance Taco wishing everybody a great day.